All right, my camera is on. How are you feeling? Uh, a little nervous. Very excited though. Um, I think it'll be good. I think this will be good. Justin, where does your story begin? I am an artist since I was four. Um, I'm also a veteran of the United States Army. I uh, served five years. I worked in special operations, so it was a lot of like, um, a lot of expectations, a lot of holding yourself to a higher standard, um, being motivated. Do you still feel like the same person you were when you were serving? Nah, I'm completely a different person, but I, I mean, the core of me is still there, but I've evolved into a different person based off like me leaving and getting more knowledge and making new friends. So, yeah. I want to give you the opportunity to share as much as you'd like, but I also want to make sure we don't cross any boundaries and you're comfortable throughout this whole process. Mm -hmm. Share whatever you're comfortable about the trauma you experienced in your service. And the correct answer might be none of it, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Okay. I, I definitely want to share like aspects of it. Like me, I've, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff, like a lot of crazy stuff, like stuff like I've, I share with friends and they like get sick. Um, I like, I like, I've, I've, I've jumped out of planes. I've, I've fast roped out of helicopters. I've shot my weapon. In, in combat, like when I was like point dead range with like an enemy, um, I've seen I like I've seen like the life cycle. Like I I know what it's like to look in the man's eye and see them like leaving this earth. I've seen it happen with women as well. Uh, those are the things that are heavy that stick with me. Did you realize that? this was going to have a big impact on you when the trauma first happened or did it, was it later that you realized the weight of what you experienced? Both kind of, because when it happened, it, it's kind of like, and I've talked about this in therapy too, like um, you, you kind of get like looked at in a better light if you're, if you're like forged in fire. Like if you've actually like shot your gun, if you've actually seen war, right? So like, I was like, yes, like I, I checked this box on this macho thing that all these people around me care about. So it, it would help me assimilate in the environment even more. But afterwards, looking back at it, looking back at it, a lot of that stuff, like I still dream about it. Like it happened yesterday. Some of it's really heavy. I didn't, I didn't realize how like, deeply and rooted in my psyche some of this stuff had been. I often wonder if the powers that be intentionally keep the price of higher education and medical care super high to make it inaccessible, to entice young people into the military and dangle that carrot and say, hey, if you join, you can have health care and higher education and look, it's so expensive, but through us, you can get it. You sound like my wife right now. That's what she says. She literally says that, like, it's all like a not to get into conspiracy theory talk, but it's it's just like simple, like it's just like all right, you wanna you wanna wanna do this extra stuff, then come here and we can help you get to that. I mean, it's not that much of a conspiracy. Every other country offers these things um, through just the taxes that the citizens pay. Yeah, like it's like a human right. Yeah, but here, um, military is one of the main ways to get it, and then you get forced into these traumatic events. I, I agree with that. I think that is like. Would you have signed up if they didn't offer higher education and healthcare? No. What was it like for you growing up in Texas? Dude, I was okay. I I I grew up. This is I I don't think I've ever expressed this to anybody. Like low key, not even my wife. I grew up feeling like an alien. I grew up like feeling like. There's got to be a bigger world out there. Do you experience flashbacks? Yes. Yes. Sometimes they happen when I'm at a red light driving. They happen at night before I go to bed. Um, disassociation is like a thing that happens with me. Kind of like where you feel numb. You don't feel like you're in your body. A lot of times it happens when I feel like that. Like I'm in a situation. I'm in the I'm in a grocery store. 
I don't feel real. I don't feel like I'm there. And then all of a sudden, like I remember like, this is like deja vu. I'm walking in the desert underneath night vision goggles in Afghanistan. And like, just like, and then pull me back. And I'm like, let me get this lettuce. I guess it's like, like, are you here? Are you here? I'm like, yeah, 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 I'm here, I'm here. What are you thinking when you're dissociating? Are you thinking? Sometimes I'm just like, is this real? Like, where am I? Like, how did I get here? Like looking in the mirror and not recognizing yourself or just like, like it used to happen a lot when I was deployed. Like I'm just walking out there and I was like, this can't be real. Like, who am I? How did I get here? I feel like it manifests a lot in sleep. So like I have like really bad night terrors. Um, some instances of it has been very embarrassing, like family trip in a hotel and then I'm like screaming bloody murder in my sleep. Um, Hypervigilance. Hyper um going into like public places and like being so aware of everyone that's with me who's around me uh how many times did this person walk past me um making sure like if maintenance men are doing something like what are they doing is like are, are these actually maintenance men just being very leery and cautious of everybody around me did you have to be alert like that when you were serving to yeah. evaluate threat yeah, especially because I was an army ranger. So like going on target, you have to be aware. You have to watch your six. You have to watch your, your ranger buddy six. Um, just like just being aware, not in La La Land, not spaced out. With PTSD, is the goal to get to a place where you never think about the traumatic events? Is it to get to a place where you can health, healthily sit with those events? What is the goal? I feel like the goal is to be able to healthily sit with the events and when you do, because these things are going to be lifelong, like they're traumatic, but when they do happen, you don't like shut down or you can't like function. I just want to be like, all right, observe that I'm feeling this, I'm going through this. It is what it is. Let's, let's keep it going. Don't let it like, don't let it stop the momentum of your life. What are all of your diagnoses? Okay, so I have bipolar disorder uh, one, bipolar one. I have borderline personality disorder. And then I also have PTSD. Let's talk about the diagnosis of borderline personality disorder. What is that and how does it impact you? So from like what I've read, what I've gathered, what I've been told, it's kind of like um, I, I have I have like this deep need to not be like alone or left alone or abandoned. Um, there's also aspects or like disassociation. Uh, for me personally, that, that happens a lot. Um, emotionally, I feel emotions very strongly. The term they call is like having like no emotional skin, like thick skin, so emotionalized like no skin. So it can cause me to be feel hurt or betrayed or slighted for something that's nowhere near that. Like I'm in essence, I'm kind of feeling real strong and I look into it and I'm reacting. Um, that that diagnosis, like it made a lot of sense because I, I, I went with knowing I was bipolar one for a long time. But when I actually found out that I had borderline personality disorder, I was like, it filled in all like the holes. It made so much more sense. Cause like how I try to describe it to people is like with a uh, bipolar disorder is more so like a storm rolls in and then you, that storm is either a manic or depressive episode. And then it lasts for what it lasts and you like ride it out and then it passes. Um, how long it lasts depends on like you and whatever the case may be. But like, that storm isn't always just coming in and out, like for me personally. So it's just like, dude, like, why do I feel empty? Why am I so scared to to like lose people? And that, and that that of feeling abandoned, it could put you in weird positions where you start people pleasing and trying to do stuff to keep people around or working really hard to keep certain people around when it's like, I don't know. It's like, it's weird. Like I've been in situations where I try to people please work real hard to keep a friend around, then feel slighted that they're not appreciating me for putting in this work. And then it like devolves into the relationship, like dissipating. 
or like them like you're crazy can't talk to you in what ways will you people please um like finding out finding out like something you like and then like maybe getting you like a little gift or like being like being emotionally and like available for you for any time you need like oh man it's like one o'clock in the morning i'm fighting with my girlfriend fighting my boyfriend like i'll be there for you i'll listen to you all right and then it's just like it's kind of a manipulative behavior because it's like i'm doing this because i don't want you to go not necessarily because i'm trying to be a good friend but then like i wanted to be phrased as i'm a good friend so you won't leave me um how do you realize that therapy you experience both manic and depressive episodes of bipolar disorder i do i do is ptsd harder to deal with in one of those as in like you're going through an episode and then a ptsd flashback happens exactly yes so if you're depressive or, or if you're manic is there a difference in how you how you experience a ptsd flashback that's a great question because it's definitely happened when i'm depressed and like something ha happens and it drudges up that memory. And then you like, I get in a point where I'm like blaming myself for everything. And I'm like, it's basically like you're piling on the, the resentment and bad feelings you're feeling. So it deepens the depression. Uh, manic, I, I can't say I've had a PTS flashback where I'm manic. Cause like when I'm manic, I'm like, I'm a Viltrumite. I'm a I'm a Kryptonian. I'm a Saiyan. I'm I control this. So you feel like you're you're impenetrable. Yes. Yes. Trauma can't impact you. Yeah, like I like I've been so like delusional. I I consider like is death even real? Like can I die right now? Like if I jump off this, I I'm pretty sure I if I have a broken leg, it won't hurt that that bad. Like that must lead to some risky behavior. Yeah, mania was really bad for me. Like spending money i didn't have like putting myself in like really dangerous situations like my body if you know what i mean um just like like ruining relationships because of like me like flying off the handle um i feel like even like some of my friends that have been friends with me like i've luckily retained they they've even noticed like how like it used to affect me like I used to wild out like the mania was really bad for me like delusions of grandeur like I can like I can convince myself of anything in my head and I'm like oh no that it works like that so I can just go do this but like like bipolar like I've gotten in trouble in the law and when I was younger I was like running in with the law a lot because of me just like being manic and wilding and like just doing crazy stuff just like didn't make sense and then on the opposite side of that being so depressed like you don't want to get out of bed or being being so low and feeling so empty that you think no matter what you say or what you tell to someone to try to convey how you're feeling you can never like fully convey that and like the the lows sometimes are, are way worse so like at least like with mania like, I know it's not good, but at least with Mania, I'm like, I'm in an elevated mood. Like, I feel like, like, it's delusion of grandeur. I feel like I'm the man. I know what's going on. And opposite side, just being so low that, like, you feel like you're nothing. And, like, um, being in that and expressing that to, like, family when they don't actually get, like, depression, um, it can be hard. You, that's how you get responses, like, just don't feel sad. When you are symptomatic, when you're having a flashback, or with any of your disorders, if you're having any type of symptom to do with any of them, what do you hope others do to support you? Just have patience with me. Um, I kind of feel like I'm more aware because of the therapy that I've taken up. Um, just have some patience. Give me some grace. And if I was wrong, I will come to you and let you know I'm sorry. Just give me grace and have a little patience. What does patience look like when... A person is having patience with you when you're having a flare-up sometimes it's kind of just letting me like get it out like and realize that like I, I mean I don't want you to be a punching bag that's why I'm like actively working not to be that to you but sometimes just letting me go through my my little spiel let him let me have my little meltdown 
and then I can get back to center and then I can realize I can evaluate it. But the goal is for me not to get to that point where I'm bleeding over on you. Of all the disorders you have, is there one that is most difficult to deal with? I would say borderline because I have to deal with it every day. Like, it's like uh, I'm always like evaluating my action and my reaction with people and then making sure that like um, like you can do like little stuff like being sarcastic or passive aggressive or like little stuff that can come out because of that too like am I actually communicating why I'm upset does my reaction fit the situation so it's like a constant monitoring because like I, like I, my biggest fear is bleeding this on my wife bleeding this on my daughter which has unfortunately happened and like it I think it takes a lot of patience to be with a person that has this disorder how does borderline personality disorder impact your life significantly I feel like the the biggest thing that they can strain is like personal relationships with people close to you so like I have a wife and I have a, I have a four-year-old daughter so like like picking unnecessarily and uh, picking un unnecessary fights with her, um, feeling like, like feeling like she's attacking my character when there's just like a critique or something I can do better, like, like, uh, like having like, oh you didn't do this, like, are you saying I never do this? And like feeling like it's just like an attack on my character, like you think I'm back. And that's another thing, uh, splitting, um, looking at situations, all bad, all good. I've definitely like labeled friends like that, and then like, oh, like they never do that. They're they're good as hell. And then when they do a, something that's like, quote unquote, not good, being like really like, who are you? So like doing that even with my wife, and then like um, making sure that like I don't like bleed onto my kids, on my kid. I don't want to like um. That's, I think that was a, a big thing that pushed me to like really like try to take the DBT therapy seriously because I don't want to like bleed these emotions on my kid unnecessarily and cause like trauma or her. If there's somebody watching this who loves a person with all the same mental health disorders as you, what type of advice would you give them? Be patient. You got to be patient. I would say that as long as that person is actively seeking help or trying to be better, why not take a chance on them? It's like it, it's it's different if like they got these diagnoses and it's like I'm fine, whatever. But if they understand what it is and take it serious, maybe you should take them serious as well. I agree with you. It's complicated because there is a level of toxicity where it might be healthy not to have it in your life. Mm -hmm. But people with mental health disorders, such as the ones you have or many mm -hmm. other ones in the world are worthy of loving, can get to a place where those toxic traits don't impact others. Um, what is the line there? I feel like it, it takes a uh, responsibility of the person with the mental illness, but it also takes the person on the outside dealing with them to understand what mental illness they have. Um, not everything that they do is excused by their mental illness, if that makes sense, if you get what I'm saying. Not everything they're gonna do should be just, oh, it's because I have this. But at the same time, there are things that happen based off their diagnosis that are not in their control. It's just that if they're actively aware and trying to take action, that's different. When did you sign up for therapy? I, well, I've, I've, done, I've done therapy off and on for like, t -t 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 -t, since like 2014, 2015. After service? Yeah, after service, I did therapy. The first time I like I went to therapy was like a giant thing, and like even like like my sergeant at the time, I'm still cool, cool with him. He's a great dude. You're a great dude, but um, he was like, "Are you sure you want to do this? Because you know, if you looked at it in this light, it can cause this." And I'm like, "I need to do this because I don't want to wild out too hard." But um, I I started going to see a shrink on within the um, the operate the battalion I was in I kind of felt like I didn't kind of felt like he kind of wrote me off and just like oh just take this and you'll be alright or like he didn't really give me the attention I felt that the situation needed so then I started seeing a shrink off post and uh, like a civilian doctor so tell me about 
how important it is to you to break generational trauma. Dude, especially as a black person in America, it's very important that we like learn our trauma and we try to, to fight against it, to break it. They went through some hard stuff. I mean, like my mom was on the bus when it was desegregated. So like, she's seen some stuff. Like her father is a casualty of police violence. My grandfather. So I I get it. And then they did what they they did the best they can with what they had. I just I like I would just say that like it's okay that you did the best with what you had, but there is a better way of doing things. And it's that it doesn't mean you're a bad person because you didn't know that way. It's just the fact of the matter. That's just what it is. Tell me about what you hope to achieve with your daughter that wasn't done with you. That's a good question. Um, I definitely like, I want a, a, a very open, a very open and talkative communication, open, open and talkative relationship where communication just freely flows between us. Like I'm not, like I, I am your parent at the end of the day and I will, I, I deserve that respect, but I don't want you to feel like, cause you're my parent, you don't need to know this. I want people to come as they are and not how they should be. And I want to preach that with my daughter, like, be you, come to me. I will love you regardless. Like, just come to me. And yeah, that's my, my one thing. I just want to be that person and like, you can rely on me. You can tell me what's going on and you don't have to worry about the judgment. You said you want people to come to you as they are, not as they should be. Just a few minutes ago, you talked about your habit of people pleasing. Mm -hmm. Do you know about the distress it can cause when you have when you constantly conform to the image of what you think others want you to be? Yeah, yeah, it can have you living this false life, man. Like, like doing that takes a lot of energy, and I feel like that's why when I when I do that or have done that in the past, I get angry, and then it it devolves into me starting fights with these people. Or like getting mad about something where they feel like that wasn't that serious, but like you're hot. Um, it's because I'm like mad that like I just did all of this shape shifting for you, and then like you don't like give me the the pat on the head. I feel like I deserve. Does going to therapy and becoming self aware about your diagnoses, the symptoms, and why you may behave in certain ways make you often question yourself and your motives? For example. If um, a friend asks for a favor and you're quick to help them, do you ask yourself, am I just people pleasing or am I just helping a friend because a friend asked for help? Yeah, I, I definitely evaluate that. Like, like, slow down, think about what you're doing. Like, are, are you doing this because you don't want them to go? Are you doing this because you want something in return? Or like, like, I try to like think about it. And if I feel like I've actually thought through all these different things, then I can be okay with going through with it because it's not something I did on a whim. That's another thing too, is like jumping to help them. Like, like, can you really help them? Is that in your schedule? Like, Cause I have to make sure I'm able to help him. If it's not in my realm to do that, I don't want to promise help. So I think actually stopping and evaluating, like, can I help them? Is it in my realm of possibility? Are you doing this to get something out of this? Or are you just trying to help them out? Like just thinking about it makes me feel better about going through, if, especially if I got the time. Have any of the other people you served with opened up to you about their mental health struggles? Yeah, one of my close friends did. Um, two different close friends at two different times. Like one of them, he was like, he was like drinking and then he just like, man, I don't, sometimes I be trying to be a good man. And I, try to like be like a good husband and all of this and all of that and then sometimes I just feel like it's it's all for nothing like I just feel empty I feel sad I feel like I'll be trying for no reason so like that's like a moment of hopelessness that was shared with me and then like that that was crazy and then another one was one of my uh friends I moved down here with he he had a mental breakdown and like he was in my arms crying and then he was like it was about something that happened on a deployment where he felt like he was responsible for the dude stepping on an IED. And then he just blamed himself over and over again. But he never would go get help. Never. What's it like for you to hear your friends express those things? 
in some part of me, I kind of feel happy that they're they're comfortable enough to come to me with that because again, like I want people to come as they are, not how they should be. And then part of it makes me feel like, dang man, like I can encourage you to get help. I can tell you what you do. I could be there for you, but like, are you really gonna go go through with it? And like, that's something that you have to decide. Can you describe the difference from an outside perspective? So maybe a friend or a family member watching you of what one of your flashbacks flashbacks would have looked like before therapy as opposed to now, now after therapy? Before therapy, I would say like, um, basically I go into like a daydream. And then when I come out the daydream, I'm, I'm like super anxious or I'm very aggressive, frustrated, frustrated, very flustered, um, kind of panicked, short, let's get out of here. Let's go here. I'm, I turn into like, I want to control the situation because I feel like I lost control. Now it may be like, I do have like Justin, Justin, and I'm like, I'm in the daydream. But then I come out of it, I may be like taken back and like, and then I may communicate what just happened instead of like keeping it in. Well, for anybody out there who's on the fence, whether they should get help or not, talk about the value therapy has brought to your life. Dude, I feel like even with DPT, I feel like that, that saved my life. What does DPT like, stand for? Dialectical Behavior Therapy. So it's like emotion regulation. It's, it's basically s slowing down and like assessing your emotions, like understanding it's okay to feel these emotions, but at the same time, um, does your emotions fit the situation? Um, and then it's kind of like, it's kind of like mitigate, it's like you, you use these tools to not make situations worse, if that makes sense. Like, cause like your, your emotional response, how you react to something can cause it to go downhill. Um, I feel like this, the, the trauma therapy had really opened my eyes. Like I didn't realize I was holding so much stuff in for so many years. I didn't realize I was blaming myself. I didn't realize I grew this hatred for other people that were serving because of this. Um, I think it's, therapy is good. Um, it's just like your body, like you, you go to the, the dentist, you go to the doctor periodically. Sometimes you need to go and check, have your mind checked out, you know? And if you're feeling a way, you, you're concerned if it's normal or abnormal, is what's the harm in going and talking about these feelings to get, to see if like it's okay where you're at.